Well, I think one of the most intriguing things about nanotechnology is types of materials that can be built to specifications. Yes. So, for example, you could have materials that are much stronger and lighter than steel. You could make airplanes and cars save a lot of energy. You could have super absorbent materials for picking up oil spills unless there are no oil spills because all tanker hulls are That's now right. made of right. non-puncturable material. I'm how far are we toward accomplishing any of these? Are any of these really on the horizon, these super materials? They are on the horizon, uh, but they're still, in terms of being able to actively engineer materials from scratch, I think we are still probably a decade away from that. Uh, which isn't very long. Which is not very long, but uh, it is the start of a process which is a decade away as opposed to the end of the process. Uh, the discovery of new materials like nanotubes and other forms of carbon that did not exist before or to our knowledge, uh, that has enabled a lot of these applications to be thought about. At the same time, we have been making a lot of progress in understanding how to build uh, synthetic materials uh, almost by design, and that is also helping us. Um, we think that with enough interaction with such materials, we will also be able to refine our simulation models, which are one of the key bottlenecks in being able to design such materials. Because nature at that atomic or quantum level is very complicated and it is very difficult to predict what the properties would be before you do anything. And the other thing is that the combinatorics, meaning the number of possible combinations that you have to go through to come up with the right material combination, those can be very large. You may have to test millions of different combinations of material before you find the right combination that may work. Is nanotechnology really a kind of civilization changing technology. We all know how radically the existence of the World Wide Web has changed so many people's lives just in a few years. Does nanotechnology also have that kind of potential? Absolutely. Um, nanotechnology, in my opinion, is more going to be a silent but massive revolution mm -hmm. because it will impact everything and it will be in everything. And we may not even realize it. It's almost like Intel inside. It's inside the computer. We don't know what the details of the processor are, but it's enabling it to do something fantastic. That's the same thing with nanotechnology. It'll be inside everything. And in, in a way, it is no different than how over history, our knowledge of materials has changed. So we have gone from Bronze Age to Iron Age to Coal Age and, and possibly now to Nanotechnology Age and so on. Now, one of the most intriguing areas of nanotechnology is in the field of medicine. In fact, we have a video which shows how nanotechnology might be used to fight cancer. So we're going to show that video and then come back and discuss it in some of the other possible medical uses. So let's go ahead and show that tape. Imagine something 80,000 times smaller than the breadth of a ridge on a fingertip, unlocking a new frontier into cancer research. Nanotechnology, the science of building small, is changing the way we look at cancer. More importantly, the way we look at diagnosis and treatment. Nanotechnology allows researchers to build new tools that are actually smaller than cells, giving them the opportunity to attack cancer at the cellular and genetic level. This technology not only enables health practitioners to detect cancer earlier, but also holds the promise of stopping cancer before it even develops. This revolutionary approach is so precise, doctors will be able to design a unique treatment for an individual's own medical and genetic profile. Based on computer chip technology, Diagnostic devices such as nanoarrays are thousands of times more sensitive and accurate than current techniques. Because of their size, multiple lab tests can be done more rapidly and at a much lower cost using one nano device instead of many. Nano shells can be linked to antibodies that recognize tumor cells. Once they are taken up by the cancer cells, near infrared light is applied killing only the tumor and leaving neighboring healthy cells intact. Scientists are engineering nanoparticles such as dendromers to seek out and destroy cancer cells. 
This amazing technology can be customized for targeted drug delivery, improved imaging, and near real-time confirmation of cancer cell death. Moving research from bench to bedside is an important goal of the National Cancer Institute's Alliance for Nanotechnology in Cancer. A collaborative plan is underway to share research and development information across scientific disciplines and around the world. As biomedical applications of nanotechnology evolve, scientists are ensuring that nano devices are safe for both the body and the environment. The National Cancer Institute is optimistic that through coordinated and responsible development, nanotechnology will dramatically change cancer patient care. The science is at our fingertips. So that was an example of how nanotechnology might be used to fight cancer. Wasik, what else is on the medical horizon? It seems like there's huge potential here. What else can we look forward to? Apart from targeted drug delivery, uh, which was the uh, topic of this video, we can also do, do diagnostics, uh, not only in vivo but also in vitro diagnostics with very high sensitivity and selectivity. Uh, beyond that, we can make implants, for example, which are completely biocompatible, will have very long lives, and could also enhance uh, our bodies. So these are some of the things that could happen through uh, nanotechnology. Uh, you mean not just fight disease, but also enhance, actively promote health? Actively promote health, uh, actively promote our ability to do different things. Uh, so in the short term, we could not only replace joints and so on, but sometime down the road, we could uh, have artificial muscles, or artificial bones, or artificial skin that could come to play. Down the road, we could have super muscles or super skins that could come into play. And who knows, uh, maybe in the future, we could have some things that could enhance our mental faculties too. Uh, nanotechnology and, and our bodies go very naturally together because we are living, breathing, thinking examples of nanotechnology. We are nature's nanotechnology and work. So as we get to know nanotechnology more and more, we can integrate our understanding with nature's infrastructure. Now that raises some interesting questions. Uh, you know, Brian, we've seen some of the benefits of nanotechnology, but is mm -hmm. there also a downside? Is there a risk of maybe tampering too much, mm -hmm. you know, with the physical bodies, maybe doing things that might have short-term benefits, but mm -hmm. maybe in the long term they wouldn't be so good? 